and it is one of the eighteen from the lake. So um, have a look at this. Oh, hello, we've got to have a bite. Go on. God, that's tanking. Jeez. Oh, hello. Middle rod went wrapping off, and uh, yeah, once again, a little uh, pink 12 mil pop up. Oh, that's a strong fish, that. Oh, oh no, he's right out by the island. Oh, so happy. What a fish, what a shape. Absolute breeze block of a fish. That back on her, she's going to be a beast. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's a chunk. I just got to say, there's a random peacock just walking, not a peacock, a pheasant, walking through the back of my swim. Just casually walking through. Oh, you've got a current, lovely. He just wandered off. Oh dear, the things you see out fishing, eh? Just seen a fish over the top of the bait. Oh, we could be in with a few. Come on. Oh, that is looking good. I need to get these fish sorted, get those rods back out. We could have another couple. It is looking banging. Right, let's get them out and have a look. Right, welcome to uh, a new video. We are back on the bank and you join me in one of the swims on Phil's. I'm just watching the water, just walking around, seeing if I can see any fish show. It's about half nine at the moment. A little bit of drizzle just starting. We are due to have some really bad thunderstorms today. So I'm just looking around, seeing if I can see any fish show. I have seen a couple show out towards the island, which is a good area. Hugh um, has done well on the past couple of weeks. He's come up for a couple of sessions, which I will tell you about a bit later on. But I'm just going to do a lap of the lake, see if I can see anything else, and um, make a decision on where to get in. Obviously, when you turn up to a lake, watching the water is essential. You need to find the fish. And however long it takes, you just need to keep looking and keep trying to find them. And if you do see a couple show, you never know, there could be a group of fish, could be a lot of fish there. Might be one or two, but you just don't know. You just got to act on what you see, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm just walking around, seeing if I can find anything. Like I said, I've seen a couple show out there, which looks quite good. Um, this wind, uh, this rain's starting to come down now. So um, we are due a couple of really big storms today. So um, I'm going to sort of make my way further around the lake and just see if I can um, see anything. Let's get on with it. Right, I'm now down in a swim called a dugout, which is right at the bottom end of the lake. And basically this gives you a view of pretty much 95% of the lake. It's a really good place to stand and watch because you can really see pretty much everywhere and get a good idea of um, if there's any fish showing. The only area you can't really see is directly behind the island, but that's such a small area of water, it's not too much of an issue. But yeah, this is probably the best vantage point on the whole lake. Really good place to um, to spend a bit of time watching, as you never know. And there's a couple of guys that have turned up, so it looks like there's going to be a few on. A couple of them have said they want to get in particular swims. One of them did really well apparently in the point, so he's getting in on the point which is um, round to my left down in the corner. And there's another guy I think that wants to get in scaffold, which is um, over on the bank to my right. So I'll be honest, I've seen some fish show up by the snake pit towards the island. So I'm thinking that's probably gonna be where I'm gonna go. I have been stood here for a while and I've not seen anything as such. Um, I might have seen a little show, but I'm not too sure if it was a tench. But anyway, I'm going to um, carry on walking around and I think I'm going to probably go over by Big Log Snake Pit and just watch for a bit, see if I can see anything actually from the swim itself and make a decision from there. Right, just walked into a swim called Split Tree. Now I've never fished this swim. It's quite a restricted, um, quite a restricted spot because you've got the cables really close to this bank so you can't really go very far out. I think sort of 50 yards maybe is your max cast. I've not fished it as such, so I'm not 100% sure, but I do know the cables are very close. There's, um, it gets its name from a tree here, which is um, kind of split, 
which is kind of why it's got its name but um it's actually quite a nice climbing tree although it's overgrown a lot at the moment and um there's a lovely clear gravel area out to the right hand side very close in kind of underneath this tree and um when the lake was first stocked the first season they used to come up over the top of that when it was warm and used to see quite a few fish there but um i never actually fished it in the end but um yeah, it's a nice little spot. As you can see, the wind's come in from, from left to my right. So um, it is pushing in towards this, um, this bottom end, sort of down in the dugout where I, where I was a second ago. But um, I've not seen anything show down this side, which is really strange. It's not the warmest wind. It's not the warmest day at the moment, although in the sun it's not too bad, but it's not the warmest wind at the moment. And um, we're due to have some really bad storms this afternoon, so I think the wind's going to switch around and actually go towards the other end, which is more northerly, which might actually be colder again. But um, the only place I've really seen any solid shows is up towards the back of the island by the snake pit, so I think that's probably where I'm going to get in. The, um, one of the guys has made his way down to the um, scaffold already, he's getting set up over there. And the other guy is um, just on his way down to the point. So it'd be interesting to see if they have anything. They're going to be down on the wind. I'm probably going to fish the back of the wind. Be interesting to see what happens. So um, anyway, I'm going to go and get a kit, get around to the swim, I think. And um, yeah, get some rods out before the rain starts. And hopefully we can have one. Let's, uh, let's get moving. Right then, so I'm all set up. Um, I have actually been fishing for a couple of hours. Um, we've just had a massive storm. As you can see, the swim is an absolute bog, but um, it's just passed through. I think there's another one on its way. Now, I initially went in with solid bags just because I could see the rain was coming in, and I thought I'd just get three solids out there on the money and get sorted and make sure I was um, at least fishing. So that's kind of passed through. Before another one comes in, I'm gonna change over. Now, Obviously solids in rain, which is never going to be a good idea, you can end up getting problems. So I only did it initially because I had some tied up and it was an easy way of getting some rods fishing. But now I've changed over, I've just rigged them all up with leg clips. So I'm using leg clips, um, lead free leaders, four ounce lead, and I'm using my faithful D-Rig um, soft coated braid. This is the ESP tungsten loaded and I've got that down to a size 4 ESP power point and um, it's D-Rig fashion with a little bait screw on the back of it. I'm gonna be fishing wafters on all of them. I'm gonna go in with bright initially, just fish some bright wafters, see if what happens, see if I get any, um, any pickups and um, go from there. Now Hugh was actually in this swim last week. He was fishing around 22 wraps and he actually ended up losing quite a few in the weeds. So I've actually gone a little bit further. So it's a bit further onto the spot. It's quite a large area. It's kind of clear in places, a bit sort of light weed in spots but um it's relatively quite quite open so i've decided to go a little bit further so i'm going to fish maybe um one rod at 23 and two rods at about 24 and then i'm going to sort of bait up probably uh 24 uh wraps so i'm going to be fishing one short of the bait two on the bait and just see what happens the reason for doing that is because he he was getting fish going into the weed and what i want to do is try and fish a bit further past it so if i do get a take hopefully the fish are going to kite off to the right away from the island into open water where i can then play them back without the chance of them getting into that big bit, bit of weed because it is quite a thick bit of weed obviously i'm using leg clips so the leads can drop off if it does get in the weed um they'll probably drop off on the take which is ideal because this is quite a weedy venue um, and that is a tactic so hook bait wise i'm going to just be using an array of the dna wafters 
in the sort of bright colour. So I'll probably use one on Fruitalicious, one on Pink Peril, and probably one on a PB, which is the yellows. And I'll just change them around, see what produces a bite, and go from there. So I'm going to get them all rigged up, get them wrapped up, get them on the spot, and let's hope we can have a fish. And um, we'll go from there. Now, I will be putting a bit of bait out. Um, I'm going to give them a little bit of bait, to be honest, because Hugh had a had a few fish on a bit of food last time so I'm going to put a bit of bait out but I'll talk about that in a second so beforehand let's get the rods out get fishing and let's see if we can get one on the mat right what are we going to put on here let's go with a good old pink peril screw her on I absolutely love using these uh, D-rigs with the little bait screws, it's so, so simple. Don't work so well with a bottom bait, it does still work, but um, I find a, a D-rig works a lot better with a, um, a balanced bait. If I was using a bottom bait, I would just use a standard um, it's like claw rig, so like a hair rig, but with the um, hair coming off the um, just before the point. But, uh, anyway, that one's ready to go. Actually, I haven't wrapped it up, so I should probably wrap it up first. So let's take that rig off quick. And let's get it wrapped up and get it on the spot. Right, I've decided I'm going to fish one at about 22 and a half, one at 23 and a half, and one at 24 and a half. Here we go then, real time casting. How many casts does it take me to get a rod on the money? What do we reckon? I'm gonna go with, well, hopefully one, but I'm gonna probably say two, maybe three at push. Let's see. That is not far round enough, so that's uh, one. I didn't punch that hard enough either. That only just hit the clip. When you do a cast, although that didn't hit the bottom, just check the hook point. If you do a miscast, always check the hook point. Make everything, make sure everything's bang on. That didn't actually hit the bottom. I managed to wind it back before it touched down. But um, always make sure you check those hook points. Oh, boom. Right, two. That wasn't too bad. Oh, there's a perch just attack some fry in the margin. Now I've got to do the whole um, mucking around with the spool. I hate the spool sticking out. I like the spool to sit sit back because I'm quite fearful of line getting caught behind. Oh, look at that shoulder perch. Quite fearful of um, line getting caught behind the spool if I get a take. And also, I think a load of dirt gets into um, the back of the spool as well. So I always try and wind them so that they're sitting back as far as they can. Obviously, it also looks a lot sexier when you get a bite, but that's not cool to say that. So it's not it's not carpy uh, making things look good anymore. Actually, don't want 
want it super sensitive. Hello, Delkin, wake up. I'm sure this is a great bit of bit of video. Listen to me set my alarm up like this. Oh, lock her in. Right, happy days. Next rod. Right, middle one then. Twenty three and a half wraps. We're going with a little white uh, milky malt. That is, and um, yeah, see if that does the business. Oh, hello, just smash that rod, good job. Right, before I put the last rod out, the right hander, rod three, which is going to be 24 and a half wraps, I thought I'd quickly just show you the rig. So, there you go, leg clip, lead free leader, four ounce lead, and then I've got about nine to ten inches maybe of ESP tungsten loaded. Like I said, D-rig fashion onto a ESP PowerPoint size 4. Then I've got a little bait screw attaching, in this case, a Fruit Relicious 60mm wafter. There is a kicker on the uh, swivel to obviously how you push it away. So as that goes out through the air, obviously it pushes it away like so and stops it sort of tangling up. And if you're hitting a clip, as you hit the clip, it straightens out so it doesn't tangle. But um, yeah, there you go. I'm going to get that out on the money and hopefully something happens. All right, last rod going out then. This one's at 24 and a half. Now, the middle rod took one cast, whereas the left rod took two. Hopefully, I can get this one out first time, but we'll see. It's not really that far, so I mean, it's under 100 yards, so. I should be nailing these, but like I've not done a lot of carp fishing recently, so to be fair, I'm a bit rusty. <clears throat> oh. That went down absolutely lovely. And that was first time. I had the best drop so far. That went absolutely cracking down that one. Just sinking the line. When you put your rods out, don't just stick them straight in the rest. I might be teaching people how to suck eggs here, but um, get your tip down, deep, dig it down as deep as you can, and try and watch the line on the surface. And as the two lines meet, so the line from your rod tip, and then obviously line coming the other direction from your lead, as they meet and drop below the surface, obviously that's your line sunk. Once that's happened, you can then start messing around trying to get things as you want them and tighten up to it and stick it in a rod rest. You want to make sure your, your line sunk below the surface. I mean, I fish tight lines. I'm, I'm not a slack line angler. I was for a few years, probably about sort of 10 years ago. I used to use slack lines a lot, um, but I used to fish a lot smaller venues. When I'm fishing like this, at decent ranges, I'd never use a slack line, obviously. You're not gonna get a slack line anyway at um, close to 100 yards, but um, I know there's people that think slacking it off and having it loose makes a difference, but um, I think unless you're fishing sort of maybe 20 yards, I don't think you can actually get a slack line because there's too much, unless you're, fish, well, unless you're fishing a really barren lake, there's too much between the rod and the hook bait that's going to cause issues and lift the line above the um, the bottom. But um, that is looking good. Right, before I spot out, I always make sure the braid's wet. And the reason for that is it prevents any frap ups or crack offs. Doesn't mean it's avoidable, it can still happen. But um, yeah, just make sure you always give it a little bit of dip. I know some people don't like dipping their reels because they're pretty precious about them. Um, I'm not too worried to be fair. I prefer to, um, for it to do its job than um, 
for it to crack off. To be fair, this um, this reel is probably, I wouldn't have thought many people would have seen this. This is a Daiwa Surf 45, um, which is essentially a surf fishing reel, and it's designed for quite long range fishing. It's got really shallow spools for light lines and light braids, and it's absolutely perfect for a spod reel. I don't know many people that actually know about this reel. A lot of people use the um, sort of designed reels for carp, uh, for spotting. This isn't obviously designed for spotting, it's, it's designed for surf fishing. But I can load this up 300 yards of 20 pound um, J braid, I think it is, Diver J braid, and then a leader fills the spool perfectly. It's a little bit low at the moment because I have lost a bit of braid. Um, over the time, over the last sort of 12 months or so, but um, and then um, yeah, it's um, it's actually mag sealed, which um, basically means that the inter some of the internals are sealed, so dirt can't get in there, which is what they do in some of the really high spec carp reels now. But you're paying a lot of carp tax for these, whereas for this reel, although it is probably more expensive than your average spod reel, it's not as expensive as um, your carp reels because it's got no carp tax on it. So um, it's priced for the sea market, which means it's nowhere near as expensive. And to be fair, these would make amazing long range reels um, for carp anglers if you don't want to go so, um, so pricey. They're a little bit blingy, I'm not going to lie. I don't like that about them. But at the end of the day, it is for sea fishing, so... That's why they're a little bit blingy, but uh, anyway. Send it. That's a little bit too far to the right. Right, I'm gonna put a little bit of bait out. I'm not gonna show you the whole lot, it's gonna take a while. But um, I'm basically gonna put pretty much a five liter bucket of bait out there. Hugh is, um, not been using that much, but he has had quite a bit of bite, uh, quite a few bites over a little bit of bait lately. So um, I've um, been fishing a lot of solid bag fishing lately on um, where the places I've been going. So I uh, I thought, you know what, I'm going to put a bit of bait in and just see if it if it doesn't work, then um, I know for next time. I think sometimes you have to try these things. It might you know it might potentially ruin your session. And, um, you know, it might be sort of putting too much food in. But they're going to eat it at some point. So it's only going to make the fish in the lake grow. And I think sometimes on the syndicate, you need to think about the long term, like the longevity of a fishery. The fact that the more food you're putting in, the bigger those fish are going to get. That's bang on the money. A little bit of a light cast, eh? Um... Yeah, the more bait you're putting in, the bigger the fish are going to grow. You know, the more chance you're going to have a, a bigger average size. If people are just fishing singles, bags, that sort of thing, the fish are never going to stack the weight on. The reason some of these commercial places do so well is because so much bait goes in and like day ticket fishing, so much food is going in, the fish just stack the weight on. And um, we have in the past on here done really well fishing over large amounts of bait. I actually had a, a pretty good hit a few years ago and I got through about, I think about 10 kilo. And I know um, the first year they were getting through a sacks of pellet in a weekend, like 25 kilo sack of pellet or 20 kilo sack of pellet because they were absolutely feeding their heads off when they were first put in. But um, obviously we're four years on from, uh, from there now. So they've got a little bit wiser. Oh, absolutely banging. Right, so I've just put a bit of bait out. I've put near enough a five litre bucket. I've put the um, DNA bug out there in 16s and 12s. There's also been a bit of S7 and 8 mil. I love those little baits and um, I had a bit left over so I put that in there. I've also then got the Maxi um, Cray Mix, which is the pellet, loads of different sizes. Obviously it's got a bit of a crayfish scent to it, absolutely honks to be fair. Um, I've covered it all in the DNA um, Bug Hydro Liquid and I've also soaked the boilies prior to um, mixing the mix up 
mixing the mix up, mixing up the the, uh, the bait for this session. I actually soaked them for about 24 hours before that in some of the boily liquid. So um, that should be pumping out a load of traction. And yeah, I've put it all in the um, bucket. I actually added some bug crumb as well, just to so try and soak up some of the liquids. And um, I've just spotted that all out on the spot. So I'm feeling confident. Like I said, this swim's done a few fish the past few weeks. So I do think there's a chance of a bite. With the weather though coming in, I think I'm gonna to have to put the camera away. Hopefully I'll have a bit of a break later on and I can do a bit of filming. But at the moment, it's um, it's looking very grim what's coming in. So um, anyway, hopefully we'll have a fish and we'll have something to show you. But um, I guess we'll have to see how the uh, rest of the day goes. So um, I'll catch up in a bit. Well, I wasn't expecting that, but the right hand rod absolutely ripped off in the middle of that storm. And I managed to get it in the net. Luckily, I've got the um, 50 inch brolly, which I use for my short sessions, day sessions. I brought that with me and I managed to run out, grab the brolly, chuck that on my shoulder as I'm not wearing my waterproofs and played a fish while crouched down really low to the ground because I was really worried with a 13 foot rods with that massive storm over my head, there was some real big sheet lightning and the last thing I wanted was 13 foot of rod stuck in it, stuck up in the air, but um, we've got one in the net, happy days, unbelievable. Right, there we go then, a thunderstorm cracker. The rain's just passed through and the thunderstorm's gone, but um, I had this one in the middle of a storm. It was absolutely lashing it down with rain and the rod went ripping off. And um, I had to put the um, 50 inch brolly up and have it on my shoulder because I didn't have my waterproofs on, it was absolutely hammering it down. But um, she's gone 21 pound one ounce, so happy days, nice 20 pounder. First bite off the spot. I really, I'd only just got the rods properly sorted, ready for the evening, and um, yeah, it went off, so I'm happy with that. But what a lovely fish. Right, there's the other side then. Really happy with that. I'll get a couple of stills, and I'll slip her back and see if we can get another one. Right then, afternoon update for you. So it's the second day into the afternoon now. I've not done any filming this morning as um, I reeled the rods in this morning, went around and used the toilet, walked around, had a chat to some of the guys to see what had been happening as uh, the night was quiet for me. I didn't have anything in the night. One guy had one right down the bottom end um, not long after, uh, not long before I actually got to him. So sadly I didn't get to see it, but it was a, it was a 20 pounder. The guy on the point hasn't had anything and there was a guy nearly opposite me on the far side. I don't think he had anything, although he had packed up before I, um, I got around there. Now, um, I come back around to the swim anyway after having a walk around, got the rods redone, fresh baits, put them out onto the spot, topped it up with a little bit of bait, and um, we've just had a bit of a storm come in and the spot has kicked off. And if you have a look down here, I've had a double take. Got one in retainer, one in the net. The rings just passed through, so I waited for the storm to go. I've not got the rods back on the money. I've still got one fish in, but I'm gonna sort the fish out, have a look at them, see what we've got, and um, get the rods back out, and hopefully the fish are on the bait. I've just seen, oh, just seen a fish over the top of the bait. Oh, we could be in with a few, come on. Oh, that is looking good. I need to get these fish sorted, get those rods back out. We could have another couple. It is looking banging. Right, let's get them out and have a look. Right, that's fish number one. The smallest fish I've had at the lake for ages. 
just over 15 pounds it's a gnarly old thing got real sort of old rough skin i don't know if it's a, an original potentially but um most of the fish that have been stocked have uh have really put the weight on so potentially this is an original fish but um i really don't know if i'm honest but it feels old feels a bit wrinkly but um yes i think this is the smallest fish i've ever caught out of here i think but um lovely fish and um this was the first one of the double bite the other one's a bit bigger so we'll slip this guy back and have a look at the other one right the bigger one in the brace she's an angry old girl lovely fish real thick i reckon this one's going to be a an absolute chunk very angry powerful fish this one you should let me pick her up look at that lovely fish 23.7 biggest one in the session so far second 20 part of that double brace so um double brace that makes sense part of that brace yeah what a lovely fish cracking well i'm happy with that I've seen a fish roll on the spot, so I want to get the rods back out. I have both of those on the two longer spots. Um, same area, but I'm um, fishing rod length further on, on all of them, so just to cover different areas of the, um, the feature out there. But um, anyway, a spin around to the other side. Well, there's the other side then. What a lovely fish, real angry one. But um, I'm going to get her back, get the rods back on the spot, and let's see if we can have another one. Or maybe a few before um, I have to go home this evening, but yeah, really happy with our cracking fish. Lovely proportions. Loving the bug, get on it. DNA bug, brilliant bait, working wonders. Right, let's get her back. Right then, it's either absolutely nothing happening or absolute carnage today. So I've just had another double bite. You might, be, might not be able to hear me very well because there's a bit of a wind picking up now, but I've just had another double bite. Um, I've got one. In the retainer down there unfortunately the net is empty because the second bite it managed to get in the weed while i was sorting the other fish out and putting it into the retainer so sadly i ended up losing it but um i've now i've basically put that one of the rods back out um the third rod which was the last one out there after the double bite i brought that in because that's not produced any bites that left hand rod so i've that was a lot closer that's a rod length closer than the other two so I've gone the rod link further on that one, so it's out in a similar zone to where I'm getting the bites on the other two. But it's quite a large area, and most of the bait is um, at the sort of distance or the further spot, which is about 24 and a half wraps. So I think the fish just aren't coming that close or moving away from the bait that much. I thought I might be able to pick off a better fish on it, but I'm getting quite a few bites obviously off of the main zone, so I'd be pretty stupid not to put it on there, to be honest. So. Anyway, I've got two out there fishing at the moment. I need to get this out, um, get this fish out and have a look. It's not very big. It's even smaller than uh, the 15 I had. It's, I think it was 13, 13, 14 or something like that. I think it was just under 14 pound, um, which is now the smallest fish I've caught out of here. But um, it's still fun. It's still nice to get bites. So um, there's clearly a few fish out on the spot. So um, hopefully we'll have a few more before it gets dark. So uh, yeah, let's get this fish out and have a look at her. Right then, so as I was saying, I've just had another double bite, but unfortunately the second bite of the uh, the two got into the weed. This is only a little one, but it's a lovely, lovely little fish. She's um, just, just under 14 pound. Oh. Jesus Christ, I didn't need a wash. Well, I probably do need a wash. Been in retainer for about 10 minutes, so uh, she's a bit lively. Ah, look at that! What a beautiful fish! Lovely, lovely fish. That's a cracking scale pattern. Nearly a fully scaled. I think a lot of people probably would call that a fully scaled, but not quite. But yeah, lovely fish. Anyway, I think there's a few fish on that spot. They seem to be visiting it a little bit. I might put a little bit more bait in. I'm a bit unsure, but I'm getting some regular action now, so I'm going to top the spot up, I think, with a couple of spots. See if we can keep it going until we have to shoot off just after dark today. So, um, 
Yeah, let's hope we can get a few more, but uh, what a beautiful little fish. There we go. Off you go. Awesome. So I just wanted to speak to you um, and give you a bit of an update on what's been happening this year. So I've not been carping much at all. Um, I've only just started getting out carping the past month maybe. And prior to that, I'd actually had about seven months away from the uh, carp rods. Um, I did a lot of pike fishing over the winter, did a campaign on a reservoir, um, had some really nice fish, really enjoyed my time doing that. Um, did a bit of tent fishing, which was an epic fail. Um, I didn't even catch a tench. Um, it was way too early in the season. I was getting ahead of myself. It was too cold and um, yeah, it just wasn't happening. Uh, did a bit of perch fishing, had a few, nothing massive, but um, had a few nice fish. Um, also went trout in with my old man and um, enjoyed a day's trout in. Other than that, I've not really done a lot else, mainly because of lockdown. I couldn't really go many places. And um, yeah, I wasn't really um, in the mood to really get out due to um, having a little one. I was enjoying spending time at home with the family. And so, yeah, I kind of concentrated on that. But um, like I said, I've, I've got out a little bit now and um, I've actually gone out, I think, four times. And um, Hugh's been out a couple of times as well. Um, so I've been on um, a new fishery which is one of the Embryo Syndicates, it's called Homefield and Baker, it's two separate lakes. I've done a couple of nights on, on Homefield and actually had a few fish. And um, yeah, I, um, I had three fish the first time. The second time I actually unfortunately did have a, did have a bite but I got cut off and then I had a little tension at four o'clock in the morning. Um, but um, the first three fish, um, yeah, they were really nice. So um, check this out. Right now, it's been a long time since I've held a carp up because I've done hardly any carp fishing. This is my first carp of 2021, would you believe? Um, I think it's my third carping trip out this year. I've done a couple of overnighters. And um, yeah, on a home field, one of the embryo waters. And uh, I've had one, it's my second session on there. I'm nearing the end of the ticket. I haven't been able to put in any time. So nice to get back. And um, yeah, I've gone and had one. It's an absolutely beautiful fish, lovely scaly one. He's a quite young fish, got a lot of potential in him. Coming, uh, coming in a few years, I think these fish are really going to be putting on some weight. But um, solid bag, little fruit delicious, wafter, and a bit of cream mix. Lovely job. Um, we get a bag, a few fish showing, so um, I think I might have another one before the morning. But um, if not, I'm happy with that. I'll show you the other side because it's a lovely fish. Fortunately, she has got a scale missing flank but um and towards her tail but still lovely fish well happy got myself another one this was on the left hand rod which is down um slightly into the bay funny enough down to my left getting on a solid bag this one was actually caught on a um one of the bug bottom baits in a solid bag with some cray mix and actually a little bit of um, bug crumb so um, it's about I just weighed it it was just shy of 20 pound um, so it's probably 17 ish I think eight I can't remember much of thing weighs um, it's about 17 or so I would have thought um, the other one I think was a scraper 20 so um nice couple of fish to be fair there is there's a lot of little ones in here um, quite a few sort of low double so it's nice to get a, a couple of slightly better than average size um, but yeah, happy with that. Solid bag seem to be working. Second fish in the session. So um, I was thinking of going to Phil's tomorrow and doing a night on there. But as the weather is only supposed to improve, I might actually stick it out on here and just see how many I can get. But um, you never know, it might end up going dead now. But um, I'm still hearing the odd fish crash. I'm feeling pretty confident. But uh, anyway, we'll slip this one back. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll have another one soon. Right, morning then. Last fish number three, and that is a bite on each rod now. So I'm um, happy with that anyway. This one was on um, a bug bottom bait. It's actually overweighted. Um, I actually had a little shot underneath it to make the bait heavier. It was on a um, flip, sort of flip rig style. So the bait turns really quickly under the weight of the hook. Absolutely nailed little bit further back than the um, wafter rigs it really does sort of need them well but um 
yeah it's about 16 pound the smallest one so far but um nice to have a few bites i'm just debating what i'm going to do basically hugh is on his way up or is going to be coming up this morning and uh we can get on fills at 10 o'clock now there's clearly fish in the area and obviously i've had three but the thing with on this lake is they are um, they are quite small fish and although i did have one scraper 20 to start with which was nice it's going to be very hard to try and get anything much bigger than that so i am debating packing up shortly and going on over the fills and doing an extra night and doing the second night on there as there's always a chance of a chunk so there's the other side yeah lovely fish anyway nice to get a few bites nice way of ending my ticket on here because i doubt i'm going to be back maybe one day in the future when the fish have got a bit bigger i have still got my name on the waiting list so um i may be back at some point but at the moment the fish are a little bit small there's a lot of doubles and not many uh, better sized fish so um give it a few years and it'll all be sort of 20 pounders hopefully but um at the moment it's definitely a better stamp of fish to go out and fills with some real nice fish that i want to catch so um i think my time is better spent there but lovely uh lovely session nice overnighter essentially and um yeah let's slip her back and start packing down so yeah that was a nice result fishing solid bags um into open water where i was seeing the fish showing i had those three fish and that's a nice result um the week before that hugh actually fished on fields and was in the swim i'm in today the snake pit and he had a nice result i think he had three or four fish um, i think it was three actually um topped by a 25 so um have a look at these ones Right, well I don't know how well you can hear me because it's still blowing an absolute wetty hooligan but uh, yeah, after losing one earlier on, I'm absolutely chuffed a bit to have slipped up this 25 pound mirror caught in a little 12 mil S7 pop up and my ever faithful Ronnie rig but uh, yeah, absolutely chuffed as I say and uh, yeah, after a long spell away from the lake it's looking after me so far so I'll get some stills and then uh, slip it back and hope for one more in the night. The left hand rod's gone racing off just as we started the pack down and uh, yeah, we've got this lovely little common. I'm not going to bother wearing it because in this wind it wouldn't be a true reading anyway, but you know, it's probably 15, 16 pounds. So yeah, lovely way to finish a great session. Azor, just love this place. Absolutely love this place. And uh, yeah, happy days. Another one to the uh, pink S7 pop-up. I whizzed the rod back out and it can't have been out there any more than 10 minutes. And uh, yeah, it's gone rattling off again. Once again, the left-hand rod another little pink s7 pop up and uh yeah we've got this little mirror it's probably only about 13 pound or so but once again it's very welcome turning this session from good to great and now to epic so uh oh happy days i am so chuffed right i'm now running really really late and uh so better slip this one back and uh probably make a phone call to the missus just to uh pre-warn her Happy days! So yeah, well, um, uh, Hugh, nice result there. And he actually followed that up by the following week, dropping into the same swim, and um, he had another eight bites. Unfortunately, he did lose, a, he did lose four, which um, is just the nature of the swim. It's quite weedy, but um, he had four, I think, a couple of 20 pounders. Um, so he had a really nice result there. So um, yeah, check these out. Right, well, there we go then. Uh, the rods have only been out a couple of hours. And this is the first of a double take, so uh, happy days. He's obviously moved in on the bait. And uh, yeah, like I say, we've got another one to show you as well. So I think we'll get some picks, slip it back, and get you the other one out. There we go there, and there's the other side. Forgot to say the weight, so I think it was uh, 22 pound on the nose. So not a bad way to start with another 20. I'm not sure how big the one in the net is, but fingers crossed, it's another 20.
And here we go then, this is the first fish of the brace. 20 pound and one ounce. So yeah, we were just about bang on. And uh, yeah, another one has fallen to the bug. Pink little 12 mil pop-up. So uh, happy days, need to get some more bait in and uh, well, probably get the two rods back out as well. So lovely little fish, great to get off the mark. Happy days. Right then, well, good morning. And what a lovely way to start with this uh, 17 pound 14 mirror. Middle rod went wrapping off and uh, yeah, once again, a little uh, pink 12 mil pop up. Over a load of bug, happy days. Fingers crossed, it's time for one more before we've got to pack up and get off home. So uh, we'll get some photos, slip it back. Fingers crossed. Bite number two in the morning. Well, actually, truth be told, bite number three in the morning, I dropped one off. But uh, yeah, another 20 at 21 pounds. So put three more spots out and they were straight on it. So slip it back, get some more bait out. Fingers crossed for another one. So there you go. Um, so like I said, um, it's been a nice couple of weeks, um, a nice three, two, three weeks. We've had a few fish and it's nice to be back on the bank carping. Now that last session, which he was up here, I actually joined him. So I did the night on home fill, which is when I had the three fish um, on a 10 hour overnighter. Um, would you believe? I think that's officially an overnighter as well, 10 hours. And um, yeah, I had those three fish, packed up the following morning, joined Hugh over on fills. We then um, got set up on here. He was in the snake pit, like where I am today, and I was in a big log, which is next door. So Hugh ended up having a really good session. I actually spent 24 hours blanking until I decided to act on a little bit of, um, I don't know, just intuition maybe. I don't know what you call it, fishing knowledge. Um, but because he was obviously having a few fish, I just thought there's got to be an opportunity for me to have something. And so I had a, a lead around further beyond where I was fishing found what I think might have been the back end of the sort of clear spot where he was getting the fish and I ended up putting two solid bags out there and about an hour maybe an hour and a half later I had my one bite of the session which ended up being a new PB and it is one of the 18 from the lake so um have a look at this oh, look at that oh new PB 34 pound two New UK PB, absolutely mega, mega fish. Well made up. I've had a really hard 24 hours. I've had a load of things go wrong, really struggling. I've not been able to get any bait out and fish how I wanted. But I've acted on what Hugh's doing. He's been catching quite a few fish. And I've put a couple of bags longer, pumped them full of a load of the new bug liquid attractor. And I've put them long and I've gone and had one bite I literally have got pretty much everything packed up, time to go home. One bite right at the death, and it's a new PB. I am absolutely made up. What a fish. I've got a feeling I might have actually caught this one before. It looks like a fish known as Trucker, which um, was my first 30 caught from this lake. And uh, I've got a feeling it's the same fish, which is strange because there's quite a few in here now. But oh, absolutely buzzing. What a result. <laughs> Come on, yeah! Oh, I'm happy. Oh, what a breeze block. Look at that. Fucking yes. Oh, so happy. What a fish, what a shape. Absolute breeze block of a fish. That back on her, she's going to be a beast. Oh. Come on! Hey, hey! Right, I better get her back. Whew. There she is then. What a fish. 34 pounds. New PB. Go on. Let's let her go home. In. Oh. oh, fuck yeah. UPB, and it is one of the 18 from the lake. So, um, have a look at this. 
Oh, hello, we've got another bike. Go on. God, that's tanking. Oh, God. Oh, I'm going to end up dropping a mic. God, that thing's absolutely flying off. Jeez. Oh, hello. Oh, my God. Oh, that's pulling. Jeez. Oh. Can't let them get too far. That's a strong fish, that. Cool. Oh no, he's right out by the island. Jesus Christ. That's it, come away, come away, come away. That's it, go out into the open water. Cool, that fish was trying to get around that island, I swear. That's absolutely tanking. Ah, oh, he's quitting back. Oh, he's, he's just come up on the surface now. The lead's obviously come flying off. God, that's a powerful fish, that. Well, it's nice to get a bit of playing action on camera. I've um, not been able to get anything on camera as most of the bites have come and it's been quite wet. That's quite uh, quite fortunate to be doing a bit of an update and the rod go tanking off. Feels like a powerful fish. If anyone wonders why I'm playing it low, it's from the, um, it's from match fishing basically. If you watch match anglers, they play all their fish low because you can pull the fish away from the, um, the feeding zone to the side instead of lifting them up through the um, feeding area like you would if you were to hold the rod up in the air it actually tends to cause the fish to kite out to the side and fish don't tend to spook so much if you hold the fish down low and pull them out like that because they drift out to the side as opposed to get pulled up above the spot and it seems to um, It seems to spook, uh, doesn't spook the, um, the area so much. It's also, I think, an easier way of bringing them back because it's a little bit more aerodynamic because you bring them back, you're almost bringing them back using the, um, the shape of their body. You're not pulling them against the bulk of their weight like you would if you were holding the rod up in the air. Obviously, when the fish gets closer to you, you do need to obviously lift the rod up, but um, when you bring them from out in open water is much better just to give them some side strain I find. In some situations you can't do it. I mean there's quite a bit of weed here, he's gone in weed at the moment. Steady pressure. He's gone through a couple of bits of weed so steady pressure normally keeps them coming like that. I am putting a lot of pressure on this rod. You won't believe how much I'm pulling at the moment but um You've just got to keep that steady pressure on them and it keeps them moving. As soon as you stop and they get their heads in, you've then got to try and fight to get them out. That's it, yeah, he's moving. Oh, it's lovely in that sun. At the moment, it feels all right, but I don't know if it's just because it's managed to get into a lot of weed. Where is he? Can't him right there. So anyway, like I was saying, um, 
we've had a couple of really nice sessions. We've had some really cool fish. And um, this spot seems to be really producing some bites. I think that that island seems to really seem to get some get some fish around it. A lot, a lot of venues do to be fair, a lot of islands on most lakes tend to hold fish. It's, it's a, a margin essentially out in open water, so it's probably a lot safer and they feel a lot more comfortable out there. But um, it doesn't really get fished, especially from this side, because it's a, it's a pretty decent cast. And I think quite a lot, well I've got a huge ball of weed here, I think quite a lot of uh, anglers on here don't tend to fish that far out. Oh yeah. Hopefully he's still on. Yes, I can see a fin. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's a chunk. Oh, that could be a chunk, that. That looked quite big. Even that, that is a hell of a lot of weed. What we got? Well, oh, he's not a big, big fish, but uh, it's probably a 20 pounder, that. Oh, that's all right, because we've had a, had a few smaller ones. Get in. Well, I don't know how much of that you saw, but uh, happy days. Well, I was just trying to video an update. The right hand rod's blasted off, which was on one of the longer rods on the bait. And would you believe it, second week in a row, another 30 pounder. Absolutely buzzing. Second 30 of the year. This is, I think, my fourth trip this year, maybe fifth trip this year. Two 30s under the bait already. Happy with that. Nice to get among some of the bigger ones for a change. Absolutely buzzing. That's the sixth bite off the spot to, um, in the past sort of 24 hours and we finally got one of the better ones. Absolutely buzzing with that. I'm just leaving her in the retainer for a bit. It's a bit bright at the moment, but she's just down there sulking, having a little bit of a breather, and I'm gonna get her out, do some uh, video and do a few photos. Absolutely buzzing. I had that 30 last week, which was a PB. This one's not quite as big, and um, oh, I'm absolutely chuffed. What a result, what a result. Anyway, our, um, oh, Gonna have a bit of a breather, get her out, and uh, yeah, compose myself a bit. I'm absolutely buzzing. What a result. Come on. Another 30. I wondered if this spot was gonna produce one of the good ones, but uh, it certainly has. Oh, let's hoist her up. Oh, yeah. There we go. She's gone 30 pound, 13 ounce. And uh, yeah, another 30 from Phil's. Second 30 in the past, well, week basically. This time last week I had the other one, so happy days. What a result. Cracking fish. Oh, what a beast. She absolutely beasted me. I got it on um, film, hopefully, it came out all right, but um, she was absolutely beasting me trying to get out towards the island and round the back of it couldn't believe how much line it was taking. To be fair, every time I've had a 30 out of here, they've absolutely ripped line on that initial bite, even at long range, and you know it's gonna be a better fish just because the way that they go. Just got so much power and weight, it's hard at that range to slow them down. But, um, oh, what a result. I'll turn around and show the other side. Oh, what a result, well happy with that. It's nice when a plan comes together. Decided to put more bait in than what um, Hugh had done previously. Don't know if it made any difference, but to me it has, so that does the job for me. But um, the bug at the moment, the DNA bug, it's absolutely working wonders for my catch rate. I can't, I can't fault it, it's absolutely brilliant bait, and I really do recommend giving it a go, it's fantastic. But uh, let's get her back anyway. Happy days. Oh. Ah, what a result. Happy days. Oh, 
Right, we've got another one. Another one on the right rod. There's still fish visiting that spot. I think if I was staying, I'd probably end up having a pretty good set. I mean, it's been a good sesh anyway, but... Oh, another nice 20 pounder. Ah, this one's gone 24, 24, 13, I think it was. Ah, lovely. I've had a couple now on the fruit delicious, fished over the top of the bug. Seem to be picking out the bigger fish, to be honest. Um, I don't know if there's anything in that, the orange, or whether it's just one of those things, but um, yeah, I've had a few of the uh, the better stamp of fish now on the um, on the orange, so fished over the top of obviously a lot of pellet and a lot of the um, bug, so cracking result today. Really happy with how it's turned out. I'm so glad I stuck in a swim. I was thinking of moving because nothing happened last night, but there you go, you know. On these places the fish move around a lot and you just need those fish to move in on that bait and bang off it goes and you can have a nice result so there we go quite similar to the other side to be honest quite um lightly scaled it's got some scales along the top of the um top of the back but uh yeah lovely what a result still got a couple of hours maybe i am packed down basically under the brolly at the moment all the kits on the barrow next to me so uh yeah let's see if we can have another one Right, this is kind of going to be an end of the session update. So I've got, I reckon, about an hour to go. I'm going to wait until it gets dark and then I'm going to get packed down. I've pretty much got everything packed up. I've got a little bit of a shelter going on over there with a the little brolly. And then the bulk of the kit is already on the power barrow, ready to go. Um, rods are still out. Still got three out. Still set up on the alarms. But, um, I'm going to slowly start to pack things down a bit more and get things kind of half loaded on the barrow ready to rock and I've got one last brew on the go and uh, yeah then I'm going to look at packing up and heading home. I've got to be up early tomorrow because I've got the um, I've got a lad tomorrow and the missus is working so um, I'm going to have to be up to um, sort him out so that she can get sorted for work but um, yeah it's been a wicked wicked session. It's probably been the best session I've had for a long time, actually. I um, I can't remember a session where I've had consistent action like that and um, a decent average sized fish. So um, it's probably one of the best sessions I've had for a while. But um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I'm really happy with how everything's gone. Rigs have been spot on. Baits work really well. Um, the bug, I can't stop talking about it. It's so good. It's been doing so well for loads of people. Um, social media it's just seems to be taking over catch rates and um, it's been doing really really well, it's a brilliant bait and I highly recommend getting on it. Um, but anyway, it's been a wicked session, like I said I'm going to be looking at packing down now and um, probably go in within the next hour or so, but if I have another one I will obviously show you. Right, I was just laying the rods on deck so that I could bring in, so I could pack the um, bank sticks and that down and put them back in the barrow. I was just going to lay the rods on the floor. I put the left hand rod down, set it up, went to put the right hand rod down, was trying to set it up on the floor and um, it started spinning. I was like what the hell's going on here? And uh, this guy ripped off with it. £20.10 for uh, £20.00 number four. I think this is now fish number seven. So I've had eight bites, seven fish on a bank, and I lost one in the weed. So what an absolute result. I've, I've done an outro already, so if you're wondering why um, the outro's in the light, it's because I decided to do an outro, as I didn't know if I was going to get any more, about an hour ago. And um, this one's ripped off. So yeah, I was literally just thinking of packing up and laying the rods down. I was going to start bring, bringing them in. But this fish decided to uh, give me one last bite, it looks like. So happy days. It's been an absolute mega session, and um, I am absolutely over the moon with how it's gone. Uh, one thing I've noticed, every bite I've had, the fish have been exploding on the surface. As soon as I've picked the rod up and tightened down, they've just exploded on the surface. I think they're just firing off at such a rate of speed. As soon as you're putting a tight line on them, it's just sending them straight up in the water, and they're hitting the surface, where obviously I'm dropping the leads because of the weed. So. It's been um, quite exciting to be fair. It's absolutely exploding on the top and I've been getting the bites. It's been awesome, awesome fishing. So 
I'm really looking forward to come back. I'm probably not going to be able to get back for a few weeks now as um, my next day's off. I will be um, on daddy daycare as it falls on the um, days my missus is working. So I'll be spending four days with him. But um, hopefully the following set of days that I'm off I'll be able to get back up here and um, get amongst a few more of these absolute banging fish. But um, yeah, I won't do an outro now because I've already done one. But um, thanks for watching and roll the outro. If you've liked the video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Obviously I'll bring you plenty more content like this. I'm trying to get it a bit more regularly uploaded, but it is tricky at the moment. But um, there's been a load of fish in this video, obviously covering a couple of sessions, but um, yeah, it's been really nice fishing the last few weeks um, for myself and for Hugh. So anyway, yeah, subscribe if you like it. Um, give it a thumbs up as well. And um, yeah. Keep your eyes peeled for the next one. Hopefully we'll be out in the bank again very soon, smashing it up again on fills. So um, until next time, if you're getting out, be lucky. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again soon.